morning, everybody. Good morning, 9th of February, Thursday, three degrees here in Clannacilty, freezing. There was frost during the night, but it's a lovely sunny day. So I have no doubt that it's the makings of a gorgeous uh, day here in Clan. So today I'm working until half past eight this evening and it's my last day for this week. Nurse Ashling is with you tomorrow and both of us are taking Saturday off. So um, that's the story here in Clonakilty and a nurse Debbie in Dublin works on Thursdays in Newbridge and on Fridays in either Newbridge or in Dublin. So um, yeah, it's all systems are our go and it's a lovely start to the month. Thank God the first week is down for me and 42 years ago, Today, I became a student nurse in Barrington's Hospital in Limerick. Oh! So even though it's uh, 42 years ago, I actually remember it like as it was yesterday. I still feel the nervous anxiety that I had. I wasn't quite 18 because my birthday isn't for another couple of months. So I was 17 starting my student nurse training in Barrington's in Limerick, which is in the heart of Limerick City. It was a voluntary hospital then. It's a private hospital now actually after being taken over by the bonds. And it was a three year training. And back in those days as student nurses, we lived in the hospital. Uh, we trained on site. And the first eight weeks was called nurses block. Um, so we, we learned how to make a bed <laughs> and all the various things um, in the first eight weeks. And after eight weeks, we were put into a white uniform. Hats, we used to wear hats back in those days. I had bangs back then. Um, I haven't, and this is a long time. I only recently got bangs again. And put out on the floor. And we used to go into block every couple of months. Um, and I remember as an 18 year old, student nurse being in charge of uh, 30 patients on night duty. We used to do week on, week off with the supervision of a staff nurse that was actually monitoring two wards. Um, the responsibility was, was horrendous for an 18 year old. Um, I can still, still remember um, and how awful it was. And But look, you know, it's the makings of what we are today. You gotta to go through uncomfortable times in order to be able to sort of get your experience. Um, I did see some awful things in my student nurse training um, and Limerick wasn't exactly a quiet spot in the country. Um, but anyway, I qualified after three years and um, there was a recession on at the time. So I ended up um, being a qualified uh, nurse, uh, but there was no work for nurses in Ireland at the time. So I moved from Limerick back home to my home place in West County Waterford. Um, and my mom, my gorgeous mom, uh, was a ward sister in St. Rayfield's Hospital in Yall. Um, and I ended up working as her staff nurse. She was my ward sister um, for nine months. Um, now that uh, holds a very special place in my heart. Um, she was a great ward sister, but she held no prisoners for anybody, least of all me as her staff nurse. Um, but anyway, I went from there, I was there for nine months working with mom, and then I went from there to the UK to do my midwifery training, which was two and a half years um, in the East End of London. There was just no employment um, here in Ireland for anybody that alone students, uh, student nurses, student midwives, or staff nurses. So I moved to the UK. Got my midwifery training um, in the UK and gave uh, the NHS in the UK a year service back. It was part of our contract at the time to give them um, a year back. Um, where I got an incredible, amazing uh, training as a midwife. Um, and from there, I moved on to Australia because I was in my early 20s and it was time for me to travel. And if nursing or midwifery is, um, is a great career to have if you do want to travel, and, and travel I did. I did Thailand, Nepal. India and settled in Australia, Sydney for um, four years. In fact, I took our citizenship while I was there. Uh, but then it was time to come back home. Um, so I was nearly 28, 29 when I got back home and ended up getting a midwifery position in the Bonsecours in Cork. 
so I started out in the labour ward in the bonds in College Road here in Cork, Cork City, um, uh, for a year. Um, and I was desperately unsettled after the whole Australia thing. Um, some not very nice people to work with. And so I asked for a move. And I moved to the labour ward, um, whereby I was um, a staff midwife there, uh, one on one, dealing with one on one labouring women, and I did a lot of um, theatre work there because <clears throat> the emergency cesarean sections were done on the same floor if they were needed, and I was the the theatre midwife scrub uh, scrub midwife. Um, so I got loads and loads and loads of theatre experience. But uh, once I had my own family then, when I was 37, 39, um, I moved to to John Waterstones, uh, who was the fertility specialist in Cork City, um, as his very first private practice midwife. I had become a new mom. I was looking for a two-day week. The bonds wouldn't give it. Job sharing was just not a thing at the time. You nearly had to sell a kidney in order to get it. John Waterstone was looking for a private practice midwife for his practice and and I happened to be at the right place at the right time. So I did a two day week for him um, for about four years. Um, in actual fact, a somebody on Instagram reached out to me recently. She booked in and she said, Olive, I'm sure I know you from John Waterstone's when you used to work there. Um, so yeah, my <laughs> there you go. It seems like light years away, and here I am today, totally different role, but still a nurse and and a midwife. And you know, um, I suppose a lot of people think that if you're a nurse and midwife, you need to be working on a hospital floor. And I have to say, I did not take direction very well um, in the whole hierarchical hierarchical system um, within hospitals um, and. Uh, yeah, it used to get me down. I used to just want to get on with the nursing or just get on with the middle fee and not be dealing with hospital politics. I just, it drove me mad. And it found, I, I found it just dulled me down and broke my spirit a bit. And I used to get sick quite a bit, actually. Um, so, um, so the day I left the hospital, I remember one of the obstetricians opened the door for me and he said, I can't believe that the hospital has let you go, one of our best midwives. Uh, what a waste of a nurse and I remember thinking no it's not a waste of a nurse it, this is a good thing I've got my training there's lots of people coming behind me uh, so I don't uh, agree with that um, to own and to be to own my own business um, as a microblader um, and brow stylist and now doing dermal fillers I couldn't be better placed um, I love being my own boss I'm accountable for all my own clients um, I couldn't be a better place to be of service to people. Um, and my unique selling point is the fact that I'm a nurse. Um, so it's funny, you know, I, 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 found, I, I found my Irish Nurses Organization badge um, only the la last couple of days, um, which we used to wear proudly. And of course I had a badge for Barrington's Hospital and I had a badge for Barking Hospital, which was the UK. So I used to have three badges. We still love our badges. Um, but yeah, I reflect on all I've achieved as a nurse. Um, yeah. <sighs> yeah, so it's a, it's a rather poignant day. But um, so, yeah, working in my own business is not the waste of a nurse. I would not go back to hospital life now. They promised us a better life way back when I left um, hospital-based nursing when Adrian was born, and that is 24 years ago. Um, so, uh, yeah, false promises and all that, ain't buying it. Um, but I know my worth um, and I know that everybody has benefited in my business from the training that I've had in the past. Um, everybody benefits from training. Everybody benefits from the nurse training, from the midwifery training, from working in a clinical setting like I did with John Waterstone. You know, my business adds value to your life um, for you know the service that I offer and the years of education that I've put into my background 
Um, and you know, myself and my business mentor would often talk about the unique selling point um, of the fact that I'm a nurse and the girls that work um, under my brand are nurse affiliates. And we sweated professional blood, sweat, and many, many tears in our training. We always put the patient welfare in the center of everything that we do. Do you know, we chose our trainings, our ongoing trainings, our upskilling all the time from reputable sources and we buy our stock from reputable sources. So because we are a professional body um, and on the live register of the NMBI, which is the National, uh, the Nurses, Midwives, a Board of Ireland, we have a code of ethics to follow as well. So we go the extra mile. And sadly, um, I have seen in my professional career as a nurse and midwife is because we go the extra mile, we're wide open to be abused. So, I mean, you know, where else would you go that somebody would remember if you have a sick member in your family or if you're having a horrible time or if you're going through a divorce or whatever. Um, and, you know, I don't know if any of you have ever seen that um, picture. I think I remember screenshotting it one time of the uh, IV lines inside in an accident and emergency. It's only a nurse could remember where those lines go into a patient, where they come out and know exactly where things are. So, yeah, nurses are valuable. My nurses are valuable in Browtick, Ireland. I'm valuable. We add service. A very invaluable service to you. Anyway, today isn't World Nurse Day, uh, but I am very proud of the team that I have. I'm very proud of the girls who work as affiliates under the Browtick brand. I'm proud of myself. Um, 42 years today is quite some time, and I just feel that. If I, I actually, I was looking for photographs this morning of what I, but uh, of. of me as a student nurse, I had lots, but sure, 42 years ago, we were taking photographs with old, excuse me, old fashioned cameras and they were being printed, put into, put into photograph albums or probably just printed off and I don't know, put in a box somewhere. But anyway, I couldn't find any this morning. Um, it's not so easy to just, um, to go through your phone nowadays because they were all put into albums. I'd say they're probably back um, in my home place in West County Waterford. Anyway, it doesn't matter where they are, I can't find them anyway. <laughs> right, I'm at work in five minutes, so, and I'm working until late this evening. So have a lovely couple of days, everybody. Uh, it's my last day um, and I'm back to work again next Tuesday. And Nurse Ashling is here tomorrow and uh, we're all taking a day off on Saturday. So, uh, Online bookings continue, um, which is open 24 seven. Uh, the phone is going over to the answer service and we'll deal with those when we get back um, or when I get back on Tuesday. So have a lovely couple of days, everybody, and stay safe and well. Um, the daffodils are rising and uh, this lucky lady is giving gratitude that we're safe and well and healthy um, and proud to be a nurse and midwife. Have a great day. Bye. This is an emergency.